Live from Utah's news leader, Fox 13's Good Day Utah at 9 starts right now. Good morning, 9 o'clock is the time on this hump day. We're taking a live look from our Intermountain camera. We've got clearing skies out there. Damon said it was partly cloudy, but I'm going with partly sunny. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. I'm Dan Evans. That's the glass is half full. Mm -hmm. And I'm Carrie Cronk. We all know that a lot of people are going to travel this holiday, but do you know how much it's going to cost you? We've actually got a look. And Thanksgiving dinner is also going to cost more, from the turkey to the dessert. We may be able to help how it could get some extra cash for you this morning. We're going to tell you how. Well, we're just giving it away, really. So. <laughs> no, hey, that sounds good. We wish. If we had enough to give away, then we'd be happy, too. <laughs> Yeah, so Mother Nature has been giving us some snow and rain throughout the morning. Yeah, that uh, storm delivered pretty well across northern and central Utah. We got a decent amount of that precipitation. Great news. Uh, but uh, this morning, we're drying out. We have a few showers still lingering. Some of those in Ogden Valley, but otherwise they've gradually been tapering off. And skies have been clearing off. Now, this particular view I would call partly cloudy. East side of the valley uh, still in the shadows of the clouds in the mountains, but not for much longer. And the temperature 43 in Salt Lake, 47 in Ogden, Provo starting out 42. So you still need a jacket when you head out and you'll keep it handy heading into the afternoon. But by then it'll become partly cloudy or at least we'll have that mix of clouds and sunshine. So we get a break from the storms today. Tomorrow, different story. We'll take a look at the timing of that coming up in just a little bit. Thank you, Damon. We're following developments this morning as police in Ogden investigate a deadly shooting. Scott McCain has more on what we know as police piece together what happened. A busy night for Ogden police detectives in particular trying to sort out what happened. This all begins about 8 o'clock last night with reports coming in about shots fired on Patterson Street here in Ogden. Officers racing to the scene and when they arrived, they found two men with gunshot wounds. One of them, despite life-saving efforts, wound up passing away. Another was rushed to a local hospital and was reported to be recovering after emergency surgery last night. Police then tell us that the suspected shooter winds up surrendering to them and is now in custody. At this point, though, no names on anyone involved in this, and neither the victims nor the individual who allegedly pulled the trigger. We're expecting an update a little later this morning. In Ogden, Scott McCain, Fox 13 News, Utah. Scott, new this morning, the Millard Sheriff's Office is warning of a potential dangerous hitchhiker on I-15. They say if you spot a man wearing dark, bulky clothing with a stocky build and attempting to catch a ride, don't approach him. They urge you to call 911 or the Millard County Sheriff. There were more than 1,500 new COVID cases reported yesterday. Of the newly reported cases, 350 were in school-aged children. There were also 13 more deaths, raising the pandemic's toll to 3,313. A bill that would carve out exemptions for workers who don't want to get the COVID vaccine is in limbo this morning. State Senator Kirk Cullimore introduced it during the special legislative session. He says they're trying to find the balance between business rights and individual rights. The measure would block employers from firing or refusing to hire employees who choose not to be vaccinated. The bill would also allow employees to claim medical, religious or personal exemptions. We just uh, recently made a job change uh, just last week because of uh, an employer threatening to implement a mandate. Disgusting. The bill is uh, going against uh, the president's vaccine mandate, which is completely lawful. The bill made its way to the Senate floor where it was circled. People are going to be getting out of town for the Thanksgiving holiday, and that's going to mean busy roads and airports. But as Britt Conway reports, that's also going to mean adjusting your budget to afford it. Think about this time last year. We didn't have a vaccine. People were scared. Folks just kind of stayed home. But this year with vaccines comes a lot more confidence. People are feeling better about traveling. Ready to get back out there. It's almost going to feel like 2019 all over again, which was a really big year. We're close to pre-pandemic numbers. Which means loading up on beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes might mean packing into planes or tackling traffic. AAA expects more than 53 million people will travel this Thanksgiving holiday, a 13% increase from last year. But as the economy rebounds, the price of crude oil skyrockets, putting pressure on the White House to act. We have tools in our tool belts that we can potentially address this with. But no specifics have been laid out, and experts say there's only so much the president, any president, can do. 
A new forecast from the federal government predicts crude prices will hold steady and then drop back down next year. Until then, these high prices are getting passed on at the pump. AAA says the national average for a gallon of gas is now 342 compared to 211 a year ago. To put it in perspective, though, it's only about 80 cents more than what they paid in uh, 2019. So it's more. But as, as we've always discovered, no matter how much gasoline prices are, people are still going to take that trip. They'll just budget along the way. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Utah's average price for a gallon of regular is $3.71, and that's nearly $1.50 over last year at this time. It's slightly less in Utah County. You'd have to drive to Sevier County to find the lowest price at $3.55 a gallon. That's crazy. Salt Lake City Mayor is proposing where she thinks federal funding from the American Rescue Plan Act should go. She says the city wants to balance needs to recover from the pandemic with longer-term investments toward transformative programs. Mayor Aaron Menenhall suggesting in a presentation to the council last night that among a few other ideas like community grants and initiatives, two major areas are child care and a park ranger program. What could be the most transformative investment we could make for residents of this city who are not um, necessarily connecting to the growth and the economic prosperity that's happening here to change potential generations in the city and to give our city greater economic stability Beautifully, the answer lies in high quality early, early childhood education access. Mendenhall's proposal suggests allocating $10 million to child care, or what's called the social impact investment. She also wants to set aside almost $4 million for a park ranger program. Back to Royce, gets it back, fires three, it's off, down. Donovan Mitchell hits a three on the way to a 27-point night and a relatively easy win over the Atlanta Hawks. The Jazz held the Hawks to just two baskets in the final six and a half minutes of the game. They broke a two-game losing streak with the win, and they're now eight and three. That was the first of five games in a row here at home. The Pacers will be in town tomorrow night to take on the Jazz at 7 p.m. The Jazz will then play the Heat, the 76ers, and the Raptors before hitting the road again. Take a look at one restaurant's solution to the people problem. They're using a robot to help bus tables. The restaurant owner says he decided to go this route when he couldn't find enough people to work. Rosie goes to a table when a sensor indicates it's time to clear the dishes. The robot turns to a worker and simply puts them in a bin. Rosie then goes back to the kitchen. The owner says the robot saves all kinds of time, and he believes his is the only restaurant using a busing robot in the state there. I would probably agree with that. You don't have to tip, Rosie. I don't no. think. Mm -mm. <laughs> Put the dishes in there. Yeah, you slide them off the table right into the bin. <laughs> with everything else. <laughs> there you go, easy peasy. All right, Chris, good morning. Hey, good morning. They, uh, they showed me where the flight simulator is, and I'm <laughs> safely crashing this plane. Oh, wait, but look, I can reset it. More to come from adrenaline. RC hobby. Stay tuned. Ow! Oh. Yeah, don't ask to borrow mine. And Thanksgiving just about two weeks away. Harmon's has a delicious idea for you and a nice gift, too. We'll learn more next on Good Day Utah. Okay, Chris has been smashing things up all morning, so they decided to put him on the simulator and see if he can actually yep. do it before he breaks no, no, it. No, 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 no. That helps. Oh, I oh, think wait, that's wait. really helpful. The great thing is, look, here's the thing. If you're a pilot, you know that any landing you can walk away from is technically a safe landing. And the nice thing about RC planes, well, you can always walk away safely from a landing. So, wait, watch. I can do a bear. Oh, I, 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 I lost a wheel. Okay, but you can get this same kind of software. They sell all that stuff here. You don't just have to use a little Cessna like I was. You can use a variety of different planes to fly. We've really been having just a ton of fun here at Adrenaline RC uh, Hobby Shop. There is so much cool stuff. I'm going to bring Parker in. Parker, uh, man, this place has is, is got to be just a blast to work in, right? I wouldn't say we work, but yeah, it's a blast to be at. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were talking a little bit, something that caught my eye. You guys have all these really great model rockets and even model building sets. Now, when I was a kid, like, we started this in our science classes at school. We started setting off model rockets, and then we just started doing it for fun afterwards. Tell us just a little bit about what we're seeing. Yeah, so we sell a whole lot of model rockets. I mean, model rockets are one of those hobbies 
if you have RC cars and you head out to the park to drive them, you can take model rockets for the kids to launch or if you're just having a family picnic, they're an enjoyable little thing to take with. And we were talking about affordability for holiday gifts, and uh, you know we really do have a differentiation, you know, different price ranges uh, through all these uh, items. But I love that this stuff is all within like the ten, twenty, thirty dollar range, and it's pretty easy to use, right? Yeah, definitely. And the great thing with rockets is if you've never done them before, twenty five dollars gets you a rocket, a launch pad, and the controller. And then from there, you look at the box, and it rates a few motors. You choose your motors if you want a 250-foot launch or a 1,000-foot launch. I love it. And then we're, we we saw all the model kits over here. Uh, do you just get a lot of people that come in and just geek out and, and want to build all this cool stuff? Oh, yeah. Model kits are awesome, especially being right next to Hill Aerospace Museum. We have so many people that go look at the planes, and they want to build one for their owner just kind of have that part of history on their desk. All right. I got to show off. Before we go, two things that caught my eye. Number one. Starship Enterprise, there she is from Star Trek, and still, still nerding out. Oh, AT, AT from Star Wars. Look at that. Look at that from The Empire Strikes Back. You can get all this and more. The store here, uh, Adrenaline RC Hobbies in Riverdale, opens up at 11 a.m. So come on down. There's a little something for everybody. They got a lot of stuff in stock, and uh, boy, I, I'm starting my holiday shopping. And and Dan. I've got something coming your way, so you just stay tuned, all right? We've got some very <laughs> cool stuff there. I can't believe it. And they're fully stocked, it looks like. That's nice to see, actually. Fully stocked. Yeah, thanks, fully Chris. Fully stocked.